Hello folks, welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, I'm Steve and this is Margot. We're a retired couple who sold up everything and are now traveling all over Europe in our 20 year old motorhome. We've just spent the last month making our way through France and now it's time to head towards warmer climates. So join us as we make our way through Spain to our final destination of Portugal, where we hope to spend a couple of months exploring the whole country. We've travelled about 120 miles, we're now south of Barcelona uh, in the Tarragoa area. I'll put the name of this little air down, down below. It's a free air, you can stay for three nights. It's only got water and waste, uh, grey and black waste, but it's set in sort of a foresty bit. But for now, we're just going to enjoy this paella, our first paella, and uh, decide what our plan is. Yeah, we can get our bikes off the racks and go exploring. And it's Spanish paella with a hint of French croissant. We've got all our washing drying in the front here. This is our uh, utility area. Uh, the sun's coming down that way, so it shouldn't take too long to dry. But on well, motorhome life reality, I suppose, you've got to dry your washing somewhere. <laughs> we set off on our bikes to see what was around us, and there was quite a few impressive buildings, but they were just being left to crumble. This one was a textile factory built in 1754. This is an abandoned railway line. The Viaduct Ferroviari del Cutler. Yet another impressive structure, just slowly crumbling. It did seem to be used by the local rock climbers to practice on though. We also had a look around the small town of Catalar. It was very nice, slightly hillish, with the standard Spanish attributes of its own castle and church dominating the landscape, like they all seem to have. Very nice nonetheless. Now we've done our standard three days off bread and it's time to move on. leaving El Catlar on our way to a, a world heritage site but we've got up early because we want to get a parking space just in case and uh, have a breakfast there it's supposed to be quite impressive but uh, we should only take about half hour to get there so it's still early it's still a bit chilly so we're wrapped up and now we're at the entrance and we're making our way to what is this uh, World Heritage Site and we'll see what it looks like in a minute. Just trying to find a way to get to the top and walk along it but it's like a maze of pathways in this uh, what park area there's not a single sign. Right, we're now lost. Um, As usual. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see the bridge somewhere over there through them bushes. Okay, well that's not the way. Yeah, here we are, see? Sat and have Steve. Brought you straight to the, the top. Yeah, exactly what you did. And if we walked up there, we would have been here without going all the way around. Look, let's see this aggression I have to put up with. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's too steep for me. Oh, see, nimble footwork. Well, we finally made it, and I think you'll agree oh, it was worth it. This is the Ferris Aqueduct, built in the 1st century AD, during the reign of Emperor Augustus. It was built to get water from the river Francilli to the town of Tarragona, some 25 kilometers away. The 
there are 29 upper arches and 11 lower and the diameter of each one is within 15 centimeters. Not bad building considering all they used was a bit of strength. Whew. Well, we made it all the way up there and all the way back down and <laughs> we didn't really get too lost. Well, we did. We got very lost. <laughs> I but, don't uh, think so. We think we're on our way back now. But what a what a fantastic structure there in the background, eh? Wow. Whew. So we've got to find a van now. Yeah. It's in there somewhere. Let's go. The walk back was certainly a lot easier than getting to the aqueduct. Afterwards, we had a bit of breakfast and settle for our next park up. This is just a quick one night park up. It's a free air in a little town called Paralada. This is the old town of Paralada. It's got a castle, of course, but it's also famous for the storks that nest there, and they were right next to the park up. We only had a day here, so we set out for a quick look around straight away. It was a nice, tidy old town, lots of narrow streets, and lots of interesting things to see. And this was something that really caught my eye, and something you will never see in the UK. A bright, new and shiny solid copper rain pipe. Be careful. Also, right next door to the air was the Paralada wine farm. So we thought we'd pop in and take a quick look. Well, I don't know if we're supposed to be there. I think we just gate crash some private party. It's quite good though, no one seems to care. <laughs> well, everyone's having a good time. We're on our way to our next park up now. It's a paid campsite. Um, we're using these every week or so just to catch up with a bit of van admin namely more mainly washing and laundry and just tidying the van and everything and then from there we go on and we'll do maybe a week or so off grid and we've just stopped and we're parked up in a car four supermarket Margot's inside getting some supplies and um, once we've stocked up and everything um, it's only about another hour or so to the to the campsite it's just outside Valencia which should be quite nice because there's a we've picked this site because there's a train station 100 meters away and you can get a train straight into Valencia town it takes 25 minutes and we've never been there before so we can have a good day or so looking round unbeknownst to me apparently when you get to a big posh campsite you have to have your hair cut or at least according to Margot. But still, later on that evening, Margot cooked up an absolutely delicious seafood paella. So we've locked up the motor home and we're off on a little recce today. We're going to go into Valencia. It's about a 25 minute uh, train ride on the metro from here. And you, uh, you pick your tickets up at the reception. And it's a five minute walk to the station apparently. Um, and it's going to be an absolute scorcher of a day. 31 they predict. So I don't know whether it's a good day to go into a built up city or not. 
but that's what we're doing anyway. Basilica Virgin, is that it? No, Basilica. We're no. right in the middle of Valencia now. It's quite an interesting town. The architecture of some of the buildings is, I mean, I'm not a sort of old castle architecture person, but this is really stunning, absolutely stunning. castle and this church and everything is just absolutely breathtakingly good. So we've, so we've just visited that building behind me. It was a, a trading centre or something built in the 14th century and it was for the merchants and the wealthy people to come and trade and everything. It also had a bank and a church inside as well. But um, it's a stunning building. We've wandered into this place. Uh, we've been able to get in with our free ticket we bought at the campsite. And this is quite a building. Just have a look at this. Valencia, have a visit to that place, definitely. Now, everybody likes a good market, and this one was a whopper. It's called the Central Market, although it was to the east of the town. It was a humongous food market with absolutely everything you could possibly need in it. So fresh and we'll stop here on our way back to the station and pick up some fresh veg, I think. Well, that was Valencia folks, or the bits that we saw anyway. We've made it back um, to the train station reasonably successfully. The, um, the metro in Valencia, so long as you know what colour train you've got to go on, you're pretty safe. Just don't go on the wrong train like us. Anyway, we're back home and just got the last 500 yards to walk before we can sit down with a nice cool beer. Definitely. Pink gin and ice cubes and relax.
That's good. Is he in the twin bath? It's hard work being a tourist. <laughs> So we're just on our way to sample a little restaurant in this campsite. Well, we was hoping to have paella, but uh, the only night they don't do it is the night we've chosen to come here. However, they do do tapas. Are oh, you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely prawns with garlic. Don't know how to say that in Spanish. El Forno El Garlico So we've picked a selection of five tapas dishes which were very nice and freshly prepared as we watched This campsite was at the top of our budget of 20 euros a night but it did include everything including Wi-Fi but this was our last day here and tomorrow it's time to move on Well, we're going to end the video here, folks, and hope you've enjoyed our Spain travel so far. In the next video, we hit the coastline with some amazing beach park-ups. So for now, take care, and we'll see you on the next one.